Okay, welcome everyone. Welcome, welcome. Uh, welcome to Hugo's desk. Um, hope you've enjoyed the memes. <laughs> it's always a fan favorite from everyone. So we have a very special stream today. Um, I have a guest for the first time at Hugo's desk. We haven't done a stream with someone else uh, yet. So this is very exciting for everyone. Uh, I can see a lot of people saying hello on the chat. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for all the love and support that you are all giving us here, both to me and to Ali as well. So thank you so much for this. Um, if uh, I just wanted to remember everyone that uh, if you have questions for Ali or questions uh, about his processes and about his pipeline, just make sure you post them on the chat. I'll be trying my, my best to keep up with the speed of the chat and try my best to kind of put, um, to put uh, the questions in part for Ali to answer. So just before uh, starting this stream, uh, I'm just gonna like introduce myself uh, for a second. For those of you who don't know me, you know my U I'm uh, Hugo Guerra. Um, I'm a visual effects supervisor uh, and director working in industry for 23 years. And um, I've worked in a lot of different places in the past. Not gonna bar, bar you with this. I've worked in a lot of companies. If you guys uh, could be so kind to support my channel, feel free and please consider subscribing to Hugo's Desk on YouTube. Uh, that will really help to support the channel. I also have Patreon and you can also follow me on Twitter if you want to. But I'm not going to waste my time uh, talking about me because this is not about me today. This is about Ali. So I'm going to jump in right away with him and, and then we'll start talking with him. So let me just... Uh, switch the do the switcheroo here so hey holly how are you doing man oh man i'm credible uh today it's i, I think it was the biggest day of the year to me <laughs> i'm really yeah man I'm, I'm really proud to be here and thanks for everyone that uh, is there in the chat so thank you so much for being here everyone oh yeah you're getting a lot of love on the chat man <laughs> oh my god so, like, it's all this brazil I, I brazilian love coming coming across you know <laughs> oh god <laughs> so cool man thank you thanks a lot so yeah i guess you know that's why we're here to talk about your incredible work and also we're going to talk about your incredible work and your your career i mean for those of you watching like we're basically gonna chat a bit then ali is going to be so kind to open some of his pipelines he's going to show us some cool stuff on clarice he's going to show us some cool stuff on udini as well and then he's going to also talk a little bit about his up and coming amazing uh, online course he's going to have but we'll, we'll get to that we'll get to that so so ali why don't you like introduce a little bit about yourself uh to the chat if no one if someone doesn't know you i think i'm gonna if you don't mind i'm gonna put your showreel running on the background uh, oh, yeah. and then and then we can kind of like go through it there so yeah but yeah. why don't you why don't you tell everyone here where did you where did you came from what do you do what have you done like tell 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 this beautiful people here what's 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 all about Cool, man. Yeah, let's see. Let's see if I can try to say everything like in three minutes <laughs> to not boring the people. Uh, but yeah, guys, uh, I am Liber Boss. I'm almost 40 years old. Um, I'm Brazilian. I'm Brazilian 3D artist. I started studying 3D in 2005 and in 2007. I actually started working in, a, in, in production in Brazil. You know, um, sorry to interrupt then, you, but the, everyone can wa now watch your beautiful work on the background as well oh, it's, uh, so, cool. so that everyone can watch it. <laughs> yeah. And then in 2007, I started working in production um, and was small, was small uh, studio. I mean, it was the biggest one in, 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 in south of Brazil, but it's a uh, small one, you know, in cooperation with uh, what we are doing now. But yeah, in that time, I was very, very, very generalist. You know, I was doing from um, um, simulation, look dev, everything like uh, also compo compositing, you know, tracking and stuff like that. Roto, you know about <laughs> those kind of things. And then like um, in 2015, I had the opportunity to go to work in the biggest studio in Brazil called Vitor Zero. It's a big one. I really love those guys. It's an amazing company. It was a very nice time working there. And um, there I could actually be a bit less uh, generalist and then concentrating more in 3D stuff, uh, and, uh, but not like doing a lot of um, simulations, you know, that I was doing before. I kept doing something, you know, like uh, fluid simulations, uh, grooming, uh, fire simulations, most stuff like that. But 
at some point that uh, we saw that it was important to me like uh, for my career side like concentrate all in 3d things and uh, improving my skills you know and then by doing that in, in 2019 um i got uh, um honorable mention in uh, art station and i started getting a lot of uh, uh, opportunities to work abroad you know uh, and then i came to canada to work at mill uh, at no film, I remember um, I got actually the the MPC and 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 Mill in that time to offer, and then I came actually to work in 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 Mill Films. In Mill Films, I worked it for a year in just one move, uh, in one show that was a Finch move. Uh, probably you guys already saw in the the, the clip, and uh, yeah, I spent one spent one year working on that, and I had like a I don't know, like 60 shots on that show. And I did some, a lot, <laughs> a lot of stuff. Um, but I could learn a lot. Uh, you know, I met a lot of nice people here. And then I had the opportunity to go uh, working again as a character, then a senior character artist um, at, um, at um, Digital, oh my God, what's the name? It's a small company. Um, <laughs> anyways. And then uh, what is interesting, I got uh, then I offered to go to the NAG and MPC too. Um, MPC was an environment artist and then at the NAG I was a hard surface modeler. And then I decided, no man, I, 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 when I was at the NAG, I was like, okay, I needed to go back to environment because I really fall in love with environments, you know, I really love to do environments. And then, uh, but it was nice because I also, got opportunity to to tweak a bit with Clarice, you know, I play with Clarice and uh, again, it's an incredible software that I really, really like. And then, uh, yeah, I got a, a Rodeo, you know, um, position to work. And then now I'm, I'm senior environment at Rodeo. It's been a uh, one year and, uh, and a half. I um, started leading stuff also, you know, not um, I'm not leading actually, but I'm leading a raid, some stuff I'm preparing. My, um, they are preparing me to do this, um, and yeah, and now I have this opportunity to to do my course. Also, it's something that I was thinking for more than I don't know five years, you know, because I came from a poor family in Brazil. You know, I didn't have that opportunity to study in a great big school and spend a lot of money. <clears throat> I didn't have a computer at the beginning, you know, and uh, yeah, I, I guess this is gonna be a good opportunity to help people. Uh, because also the course is going to be very affordable for everyone, you know, and the content, it, yeah. it, you'll be uh, with the, the content, it will be the people you'll be like uh, able to achieve, you know, um, to break the industry, you know, and get a job, you know, if they can show something really, really cool. Yeah, no, I, I'm personal projects. <clears throat> I'm really and, happy that you're doing that. I'm really happy that you're making a course. You know, I always tell everyone that I know all the artists that I worked on, uh, that I worked over my career, um, and by the way, shout out to the mill. I've I've worked at the mill for many many years, so I'm 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 glad to see that you were at the mill film as well. I have a lot of friends there as well, and um, but uh, I but really no, love, man. yeah, no, <laughs> no, I, I I yeah, I wouldn't be where I am if I wouldn't have worked at the mill. So so an amazing company to work for, um, but yeah, I'm I'm really glad you're doing that. You know, I always trying to convince all the seniors that I know to make courses, to share their wisdom, either to make an online course or at least to charge a, charge a YouTube channel, at least to start spreading. Because I really personally feel that, you know, as seniors, especially people like us, you know, I'm, I'm also like you. I also started with nothing in Portugal and I really, really had any way to learn these things. I had to learn it the hard way and I had to like... Like basically, you no. Know, Portugal doesn't have an industry at all, you know. So it's 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 a similar case to Brazil. So I'm I'm really happy to the to try to convince as many people as possible to do courses because I think as a it's a responsibility for the seniors to teach the next generation. You know, it's definitely our responsibility so that we yeah, can I, get exactly because the the future generation is the artists we're going to work with as well. So it's like you want to make sure they are learning from the best and and really like sharing the spread all that love and all that that knowledge. So congrats. Congratulations, man. Congratulations. Oh, thanks, man. Thanks, man. Yeah. And, 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 and regarding to the to place to study, you know, in that time, like 20 years ago, we didn't have that much of schools, you know. We didn't have actually answers for our questions in, you, in Google, you know. Yeah. Yeah. I know people don't. <laughs> we don't know. We, we don't we don't want to sound like old people. But yes, it's true. Nothing. You couldn't uh, find anything. <laughs> couldn't find anyone anywhere. Now, 
Some people are already asking this on the chat, so I'm going to might, might as well just jump into that. Uh, people are asking which Lord of the Rings movie you worked on. So I guess it's going to be a good, int a good segue to talk about your amazing work at Rodeo. I guess, you know, you, you've worked at Rings of, Rings of Power. Everyone now had the opportunity to watch it. We're not going to spoil anything, don't worry. So yeah. it's all it's all available. The whole season has ended now. It's all done. Uh, it yeah. looks stunning. It looks amazing. So congratulations to Rodeo for the amazing work and also all the other 20,000 companies that worked on it. It's a massive, massive endeavor. So congratulations yeah. for your work. So why don't you tell us a little bit about that? Like like you've you've been working on the um, on the Rings of Power uh, uh, TV show uh, at Rodeo. Yeah. What what was yeah. your main uh, tasks there, and 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 tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, I mean, you know, uh, we don't have that much information yet about Lord of Rings in, in internet, and you know, they are preparing something to show to the people. And uh, what I can say is actually just that I worked on the Lord of Rings series, Amazon series, and uh, man, which was wonderful, of course. You know, Lord of Rings. Do you, you remember when we oh, were yeah. <laughs> like, just younger? We are just watching you know <laughs> uh the lord of rings in tv you know in cinema and it was like a man uh, oh my god it, it was it was incredible incredible you know and then now having my name in the credits it's something uh i have no words to explain how that. did that feel man how did that feel did you stick around because yeah. you know how annoying it is in the streaming services you're watching the show and they just cut the credits right away and goes to the next show so yeah, you have to like man. pause and like oh my god i want to see it <laughs> Yeah, I, I mean, I mean, uh, probably this one, the this one from the Amazon one was like one frame of credits for everyone, you know, <laughs> and like it was very, very difficult to pause the, the my, time. My, microtext, yeah, microtext. <laughs> my God, man, you know, but uh, yeah, by the way, I mean, like I'm just one of the thousand five, um, I guess, thousand five hundred people, I guess, artists um, worked on this show. You know, we have more than 10,000 shots in the whole season and uh i'm just one i'm just one of the artists they yeah of course there's some artists they, they they did incredible works out there and um i'm just really proud for myself to be one of them you know that's yeah, of it course. And, and 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 by saying that you know i know that people want to, to want me to talk in more in depth about um pipeline about uh details how we did that and how we you know um i do that but in reality, it's a bit difficult now to show something because it's re re uh, really early, you know, yeah. um, the the final of the season. And then what I did was, okay, I would prepare something in really, really depth that I could show to the people during the webinar. And then the people can have like a, might have a better understanding how they can build the environment in, in, at home, you know, uh, for their personal project, which it's very, very important. And mostly for the junior artists for who are like now beginning, it's very, very important. The guys like concentrating personal projects and also doing amazing personal projects. And that's what I'm trying to do. And try, that's what we are going to, to cover today in, on this webinar. Yeah, yeah. And then like, and then like, yeah, I prepared something really cool because the way that I did this environment is the same way that we are going to do in any company, you know, in any place you are going to work, you are going to, to find the same kind of problems, the same kind of uh, workflow pipeline, you know, and um, yeah, that's yeah. It, I'm show I'm showing that shot that you're talking about. So, so basically, this is a shot that Ali has prepared to show on this uh, stream today. Yeah, uh, I didn't work on this. Okay. Yeah, is exactly. So this this shot you're watching now, uh, mm -hmm. looping on on the screen. This is the shot Ali is referring to, which is not from the show, but it's something very similar to what you would have on on this show. Because like like Ali said, I, I know I know a lot of people uh, probably don't realize this, but a lot of these shows, you know, they are very you know they they it takes a long time for all the breakdowns to come out, all the material to come out. So eventually there will be breakdowns, and eventually there will be a lot of work that will be outed and posted, especially when we get to award season. But right now it's not a lot of things available. You know the show just finished. Obviously they're not going to show a lot, you know, because they don't want to spoil anything for anyone. So it's always going to come later. So don't everyone here can watch it later. I'm sure Ali will then share it on his social media as well. Uh, you know, so uh, before we jump into this shot as well, I just wanted to like mention to everyone that um, you know I have it on this I have it on the screen now as well. 
you all should go and check out uh, uh, Barbosa's uh, art station. It's an amazing art station. He has a lot of work here, and you all should go and follow it. I'm just like want to make sure everyone can go and check out your some of your amazing work, and also don't forget to like follow him on Instagram as well, uh, and also on Twitter because then you you will see all these posts and you'll see all these breakdowns. Yeah. Eventually, yeah. you'll be posting them uh, uh, as as it as they come out, you know. Um, and you also you have a YouTube channel as well, Ali. I saw, I know. So you also post yeah. a lot of things there. So yeah, go go and go and check all those things out. Uh, I'm gonna post the the links of all of those uh, channels on the chat for all of you to watch uh, and to follow later. Um, and yeah, oh sorry, I posted them. Oh my god, <laughs> I posted them all in a row. Sorry about that. Um, shouldn't have done that. So yeah, so go make sure you you follow and support. Ali's, uh, Ali's work and also support him as an artist as well. Um, yeah, on Instagram, I usually I, I usually to post more often in, in Instagram and also I'm trying to actually make some tips and tricks, uh, really quick ones and, and on Instagram and the people want to follow there, it would be nice to you know, have their support. Thanks of a course, lot. Of <laughs> course, of course. So I guess, you know, I guess how, I, before we jump into your shot, like you already mentioned that it was amazing to work on the show and you know you're you're currently uh, working full time at Rodeo aren't you you're currently working at Rodeo FX and yeah. um and I'm guessing you know it's an incredible busy time right now isn't it and I think that's also why I think it's nice that you're launching this course now because uh people don't even realize the amount of lack of people we have on the industry it's insane the amount yeah. of like we just do not like, there's so many streaming right now there's so many films there's so many tv shows people really don't realize the the problematic uh, the problem that it is for the, all these studios to actually find people to staff it's really really important for you to really like you know if you're thinking of working on in this in this industry go and move forward now you know build your showreel do some yeah. online courses and apply 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 because there's so much work out there isn't it yeah. isn't that your experience as well there's so much lack of artists right now and so much work to do isn't it yeah i guess it's not only in the vfx industry i i have seen like a couple of uh, uh advertising studio like fighting to find people, you know, and uh, it's getting really, really difficult to find people right now. And there's a lot of work, as you said, you know, like streaming are, are getting bigger and bigger. Yeah. And, um, and, and, and talking about that, man, like I've say, saying, you know, I've, I have said to a couple of people like, man, I never show to the people like uh, during the interviews, um, in the latest, I actually never, it's too much to say, but like in the latest three years, I, I'm not um, showing to the people uh, my professional works. Actually, I'm I'm selling, you know, I'm getting offers every week, only showing personal projects, you know, because by doing personal projects, the people, uh, the recruiter, the leads, the supervisor that you, um, that we, you are going to speak later, they will see where you can go, you know, what's the level you can achieve by doing your work alone, you know? Yeah. They want yeah. to see how much work you can do alone, you know, without they need to take your hands and and, and show you every time what's, what you have to do, you know? Yeah, that's and, just uh, a reality of things right now as well, because people are mostly working remotely. And yeah. so they need to like, you need to almost like be a one man show of knowing almost as, as much as you can so that you can help on out on every step of the way and all every step of the production. Yeah, that's that's really good advice, man. That's really, yeah. really good advice because I've, I've noticed that in the past where people are a bit afraid of, of, of you know, of sending their show real. Oh, I don't have all my shows from the last two years. Oh, I don't have permission yet to show this film. I don't yes. have permission to do this TV show. None of this matters. You should all send it anyway because on your CV, it's going to say that you've worked on the film and it's going to say that it's worked on the TV show. And, and all the recruitments in the world, they know this. They know that you can't show it yet, but they know about the shows. Everyone knows each other. It's a very small industry. Everyone will know what's going on. So don't, don't, be, don't be afraid of, of, sh yeah. of not sharing it, you know. Yeah, and saying that, man, like, uh, uh, we are not allowed to show every time, like, uh, the show, what we did, you know, like, uh, uh, showing death, 
what we did in that show because as we said like there's a hundred thousand you know people um, uh, uh, working out there in, in in a lot of different shows in a lot of different subjects in our field but like um, <clears throat> what I'm saying about personal projects is it's because also uh, besides you improving your skills you know you can show actually what you want uh, what yeah. you can do and you can you do know? a full breakdown you can show everything you can show exactly. turntables you can show exactly. you don't have to wait for maybe your shot will be available on the stream and exactly, maybe man. it will be on the show reel no absolutely this is an amazing an amazing advice you know yeah <clears throat> because sometimes you know like working in 3d for example in the environment there's some shows there's some shots you are going to do just a one rock here in one yeah. side there are other people you do that three it's another side you know and like uh you another one are, are going to do the terrain the mountain another one you do the matte painting projection you know and some composition pre-comp you know and when you do your personal project you're going to do from scratch you are going to build your environment alone and yeah. then you are going to take you you need to take care about the photograph you need to take care about the lighting shading yeah every yeah. steps yeah absolutely to the final to the shot absolutely absolutely you know and then when then you get the opportunity to to be interviewed for some foreign company and then you are going to show your personal work and then the people you see oh you did all aspects on this uh shot yes, yes. i did and then if you have something don't need to be like something like not like a, you can, can compare a, 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 a of a movie you don't need to, to get there like so early in your career you know but show that you can well that you can do some model you know yeah yeah you can course. open then you they, they they you know that you can open uvs <laughs> you they know that you can uh do some lighting you know and then uh they can have someone that really really help you know um finish the movie in their side that that's my advice man take care about personal projects and doing that you know Cool, man. No, I, it's an amazing advice. I always keep saying that to my students as well. So, okay, so let's 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 get this show on the road because a lot of people are asking <laughs> about this. So, this yeah. is the shot that you are going to show today. This is a different shot from your online course. We'll we'll get to your online course in a minute. We have quite a few people asking when is the your uh, course available, and we'll show the shot in a minute. And we also have a bit of a time lapse to show you. But this mm -hmm. shot that we have open here, which is your personal shot with the the river valley with the heads and and a very a very Lord of the Rings inspired shot. Mm -hmm. Um. Why don't you like show us a little bit of how something like this was built? Because like you said, this is a great way of presenting a personal shot for your showreel. Because yeah. you can do yeah. the whole thing. There's no footage. There's nothing depending on it. There's no animation as well, which means you don't have to like focus too much on having character animation and having things that could be problematic mm -hmm. for you to do alone. You know, it's yeah. just an environment which is really a much, much easier task for you to handle by yourself, you know, without having a large team. So um, yeah. um, do you want to talk a bit about it? And I guess you want to share your screen while you do it or you want to do that? Yeah, man, let's yeah, go for it. Let's, let's, let's get go this it. going. So um, I'm going to like um, mm. share this. Yeah. So, yeah, go go for it. Let's share your screen. <clears throat> okay. Um, can you see yeah, All right. we share your okay, screen cool. for sure. Cool. Cool. Uh, okay, guys. Um, so here we are in Houdini. So this is, uh, I started this environment actually in a bit different way because usually um, what we do is take the layout of the project, you know. Usually we do the layout in Maya, for example. You can do it in any software, actually. You can do it in Blender, in 3ds Max. Doesn't matter where you are going to start but usually and that's the way i did in, i did in my course it's actually start from the layout and then uh after doing the layout we go to to houdini but in this time i started directly in houdini so i started from high fields this this node here and then um i created some uh lines just the curves like this one here and this one there and then um i used them as a mask uh, masked by object and i created this guy here on this side and then i went to this side here and i just create a, another sphere on this point like here and just to blur a bit because i don't want that part really really sharp so and then um just uh, 
uh, shrink. Actually, I spend a bit. And that, actually, I'll go a bit more fast on this part. So I just uh, uh, create a first layer for the cliff. It's like that. And then I went into another side here. I create another line, this one here. It's another um, layer. And then I have two layers here. I merged them together. So this one and then this one here. And then I create another layer. Why I do this? Because when we do a lot of layers, it creates more variation and makes the environment much more organic. It, it works for cliff, it works for mountain terrains, anything. So as we have much more uh, variations, we can get more uh, organic things. So then I create another layer. Like uh, So now we see here, we already have like a really, really nice uh, side. So, and and this is sorry to interrupt you. This is all procedural, right? So you're basically just like procedural. yeah. So you're basically just affecting this base geometry with with basically a bunch of processes and noises and patterns to try to come up with a random landscape, right? Is that is that Exa the case? Exactly, exactly, exactly. But here, in, what's is fun in Houdini? You know, it's very fun work with high filters because you can create anything actually. Once you understand <laughs> how the layers. Uh, the behavior of each layer, you can mix them together and then start creating more. And actually, you can have a lot of control. At the beginning, I was like, uh, 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 and by the way, man, like I know that um, this sound, uh, this looks really complicated at the beginning. But you know, in, in my course, for example, I took care. Uh, sorry for take, speaking about the course, but I, I, I need to say like this because like um, at the beginning, I did like kind of overview. You know, explain each. It note that you need to learn to create uh, any kind of uh, terrain, you know. Okay, but then let's go again back here. So, I, and then I create another layer here. So, that is this one. So, it's a higher one. So, and then I clip the top part of this guy. And then I blur it a bit, just the, the top part of this one. And then I create another noise just to not having nothing like really, really uh, sharp in our plateau, reflect in our plateau. <clears throat> So, and then I went into uh, another stuff here. I created this small stuff here. And then I decided to merge them together with the, the other stuff that we had. So before we had this, and then we have more those guys here in the sides, you know, because later on when I have the camera like going from here, from this point, I have uh, opportunity to grow some trees around uh, on this place here, you know. And then uh, the same thing happened like later, you know, um, let me go here. The next layer, I created another uh, layer of terrain on the back. So before it was this, and then I create another one there. Okay, then I just painting the environment, you know, well, here I create another one, a small one, really in the, the very uh, foreground, because my camera would pass near of this place here, and then um, and then I have an opportunity to actually uh, do something nice uh, for the camera. Let me just check one thing here. So, uh, yeah, I have the camera um, already placed. So by doing that, I could see where I am putting all those details. Uh, what I did actually, just to, to, to make you guys understand one thing, the camera, I, not, I did the animation of the camera in Maya, actually, but I exported just a, a low poly version of this to Maya just to have a better um, uh, reference about scale, position, you know? And then I could put the camera animated on Houdini yeah, yeah. and import it again. So, which is uh, actually, okay, which is actually a very normal thing to do because a lot of times the camera would come from somewhere else anyway. Because yeah. a lot of imagine if this was actually a plate that they've shot somehow, and you were just adding more environments, the plate, exactly. would, the camera would have come from the match move department or, or even from three D tracking layout. department layout or uh, yeah. you know from another department. Then it probably would have been done on Maya or would it have been cleaned yeah. up in Maya anyway. So. Usually I don't, I don't, I, uh, we don't need to take care of this in work, the yeah. day by day of work, but it's a really good practice, I would say to the people, you know, it, that's, that's another thing, you know, personal projects make you learn layout, make you learn <coughs> camera, you know, photograph, you know, and then, uh, yeah, let's go. Let's and and that's here. actually, that's actually really good advice because the, 
what it will d- gives you as well is a full understanding of what comes before and comes after you, you know, because yes, you have a, you're having to deal with everything. So then you know, okay, I need to like take care of this because I, I I just did lay- layout and it was really hard and I have to fix this and that. So it's it's actually a really great way to learn your position in the pipeline by knowing a bit a bit of everything. Not I'm not suggesting everyone should be a generalist, but I'm I'm really thinking that having a general knowledge is really beneficial on in this industry for sure. Yeah, man, because yeah, you, you're not going to break the pipeline, the workflow uh, in the company, you know, and, my, and also, man, I would say you might have your, um, um, by doing that, you can open uh, more your, how can I say, uh, you can open your opportunities to get a job, you know, like, yeah. uh, okay, you can do something different in another place, in another department, you can change your street, the, the, the department um as as the company you are working on need you know okay um so let's go again back here um are you sharing the screen again or, or not i am still sharing the screen of course no okay okay course. oh no i thought you have you speaking. have no 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 you have 300 people watching man come on let's go okay <laughs> awesome man uh thanks guys thanks thanks everyone for being here you're getting, so, you're getting a lot of love I'll... you're getting a lot of love from brazil as well so a lot of love oh cool cool cool, cool. <laughs> so yeah yeah keep keep keeping keep here keep in track and uh if you have any question i can go back here and then uh, just show <laughs> yeah. um more stuff in that uh so i then i used the mask by feature that's a nice one to select just the bottom part of the cliff and then i just shrink a bit because it was uh cutting my border here i just cut shrink a bit the mask blur it a bit and then I did the remap to push it just a little bit down in the border. So I have this and then I create the noise and then I blur it a bit more, shrink again, and then I remap it again. So I have two layers of uh, depth for my river later on. So um, then I create a high field mask so this one is uh, uh, the same node that we used a couple of minutes ago to select the river. That is this one here. I use the same node, but in different way now. I, I use this node to select the slope of the, the terrain. So actually to avoid the flat areas of the cliff. So if that, I can actually use it later to bring more details just in the sides. Okay, um, I just distortion, you know, like was here, and then I just start a bit more. I came back with my mask by feature because actually my mask by feature stopped working well in that time. And then clear the mask, and then uh, I used the um, high field erode. So high field erode is pretty cool because, um, and uh, yeah, it's pretty cool one because you can um, actually simulate the, the age of your terrain, you know. Um, because it creates kind of debris, sediments, you know, you can see the flow of water in reality, where the, the water and the, 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 the sediment will go. And um, later, uh, I used it to extract those data. For example, if I click here on this uh, uh, eye, small eye on the side, you can see the data is already stored here in my geometry. It's, there is a mask, cliff, mesa, <coughs> sorry. <coughs> Sorry, let me take a water, just a second. Okay, so I have those data here, and then I, I like to use those data in 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 look that later. I like to extract those ones in in Clarice to build my my look that. So we are going to speak about that later, just in a bit. So and then I converted the model, so now it's a really stretched geometry here. Uh, when I convert the geometry, the geometry, no, sorry, the high field, it actually become a geometry because high field, it's not geometry, it's a volume, actually. It's a 2D volume. So um, then I did the remesh and then I created um, a cache of this because remesh usually, it's usually no, remesh, it's taking uh, reading all the time, you know, it's keeping reading all the time. When you open the file, you when you stop and change something, you need to go back. And then just to not uh, uh, waste time, to not waste time, I just create a cache and then I blur it, my the side. So now I have a cleaned geometry. And then I subdivide this one 
now it's gonna be getting like a very uh, heavy geometry. Uh, by the way, my computer is um, there is a 64 gigas of memory. It's a RTX 28. Um, and you then get, I have, you need to uh, get more RAM, man. Come on. <laughs> yeah, I need, man. <laughs> <laughs> I need. It's a, actually a, I'm already using all the memory. It's fun that because my computer four five years ago was just 16. Of memory and oh, I was wow. doing my first yeah just 16 and I was doing a lot of work and it was fine you know and then <laughs> I put 32 and then start like six months later was oh my god this, this is just a bit I need more memory I've, uh, and then I've, I put 64 <laughs> <laughs> if I give any advice to anyone never be cheap on the memory like I, I have yeah. currently I have 384 gigs of, of RAM and I I mean I I also use the whole thing. I started with 256 to 256, and now I have 384. It is really you. You never have enough RAM. That's the thing. Um, I have yeah. a. I have a. There's a couple of people asking a, a question that has really a lot to do with what you're doing right now. So I wanted mm -hmm. to just jump in with that question if you don't mind. So I have okay. Rodrigo. I have Rodrigo Hurtado. Thank you so much for your mm -hmm. question. I also have an Angelo Bonton. They basically have the same question, really. Rodrigo mm -hmm. and Angelo. Rodrigo has the question, what about other terrain generators like World Machine, Gaia, etc.? And then Angelo asks, what about other uh, uh, softwares like Quad Spinner? So um, mm -hmm. why, why would you uh, decide to do this in Udini? I know the answer, but I'm asking you for the audience. Uh, why well, would you decide okay. to use Udini instead of using a, a terrain generator? Yeah, I mean, I, I, I did some tests in Gaia and also uh, World Machine. Was a nice. Those software is pretty cool. It's really nice ones, but I felt like in Houdini we have more control yeah. because there, there's one point, man. It's a worth to mention. Like when you see tutorials in the internet, when you get some uh, um, <clears throat> free free videos about high fields or any kind of terrain, you always see terrains really really far. You never see terrains really really close up the camera. It's really higher. You do you see that. Because it's it's uh, it's a complex stuff to do, you know. There's a there's an anatomy that you need to take care, of, and there's a a couple of things that you need to have in mind when you work in industry. Your supervisor might might get to you and say, "Ale, um, could you change this and that stuff here? Small stuff here." And then you thought, okay, but how can I do this in, in, in <laughs> Word Builder or Guy or anything else? You know, I'm talking about something really hero shot here. Okay, it's a hero shot. It's not something for the background. For the background, you can use another one. But to me, in my point of view, I felt like Houdini. I can have more control, and also I can cap the pipeline in the same software for longer. You know, in, in the in the steps that I needed to do. And then, yeah. like, uh, in and, here I, and, also I, and I, I guess, think... Ale, also the other, the other thing that this really taps into is that obviously the industry, you, it's always good for you to be software agnostic. Of course, you know, I, I'm software agnostic. Yeah. Most of us should be. We should use whatever takes, mm -hmm. whatever works for what you're trying to achieve. But there is a reason, like some softwares are industry standard, and obviously, right now, Udini is an industry standard, and I would say for all the audience the chances of you getting a job as an Udini artist are much higher than you becoming an artist and being hired as a world machine artist or a Gaia artist. I think yeah. Udini is much more used on the industry, is much more industry standard. So it, yeah. will, it will basically open up more chances for you to get a job, you know. Um, I think also that also means, but of course it's because of its procedural nature yeah. that it really makes a huge difference. Like, just like you said, if you have a client comment, you can actually go in and change it much easily, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, I, I don't know another stuff, for example, as in, by the way, it's a good, good answer, an awesome answer, actually. Um, and uh, um, I don't know, in, uh, in, in World Machine, I, I, I'm pretty sure that we can't, but in Gaia, I, I'm not sure. You guys can say, can tell me if uh, I'm wrong or not. But for example, if I needed to place my camera here, because usually when we are doing VARMS, we are doing for the camera. So if I have my camera here, so I can check I can check every step, uh, how higher it's uh, my my cliff is right now. You know where those details are placed. I can take care of each <coughs> detail in in through the camera and then go uh, improving my my cliff as I go. You know, 
And uh, another stuff, it's actually about, for example, if I go here and place uh, all, show all, for example, I have the, the heads that I have scooped in, in, in the brush. So I can have a better view where my camera is right now. So if I have to do this in Gaia, how I would do this, you know, how I would check this. And also in dailies, for example, every day we need to do dailies or ev every each two days, we need to present something to to the production because they need to see how the work is progressing. So uh, it would be very complicated if I kept this uh, environment in another uh, package. Yeah, know? yeah, and also um, like it gives a lot of problems in in the fact that a lot of times I I know a lot of people have always have this idea that oh we should be using the best tool we should be using the latest tool, but the reality is on the, on a company you can't always use whatever you want. You have to use something that is connected to their pipeline. You exactly. know, you can't just mm -hmm. ju you can't just replace a pipeline right away. We're talking about millions of dollars, uh, you know, uh, to do a pipeline. And also we're talking about hundreds of artists, you know, you can't just swap it. That's why that's why I think the approach for everyone listening, everyone that is listening, anyone that will do the course that Ali has or even people that are doing my own course, you should always consider software agnostics -y and just use the, so the software that is being used in the industry and just evolve there i think i think mm -hmm. that's the best approach you know yeah okay let's 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 keep here uh keep going so and then i used the, the point vop you know um and extract the vector by normals here i placed a, a, a ramp parameter and uh just to put here the ramp in color just to show what it is actually Mm -hmm. Let's see if it's taking longer a bit. Okay, it's computed. So as you can see, I did the mask like I did in mask by feature, but here I did the by hand, the same kind of mask. And just um, uh, for the the sides, I left the side of the cliff uh, empty. So cool. And then uh, just uh, disconnect here. Okay. And then using the bind i exported this data i created this data called the mask side so if i go here for example and click on the attributes i have mask side stored in my points attributes cool so using this one i could create this another one let me show just a bit it's loading yeah i think someone is actually asking this exact thing you know we have Gemana. Grozio, and apologies if I'm mispronouncing your name. So, Jimena Grozo is asking, could you show us what's inside the ATT VOP for the mask side in rock big shapes? So, I think, yes. yeah, 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 I, I, I will be showing you. Uh, so, let me just put, put the camera here again. So, as you guys can see, this is our those details that I have created just on this node here, again, with a lot of control, you know. Okay, this is good. I have some details here. It's not uh, the ones that I used. I, I didn't use this all those details in the last um, in the last render, but um, it's it's there. It's it's there actually. Okay, let me go and show to our friend what yeah. I have inside. Yeah, Jimena, thank you so much for your question. By the way, thanks for all yeah, the questions pretty... so far. It's been great. Yeah, cool. Okay. Uh, Jimana, or not that? Yeah, Jimana. I think that's Jimana. I think that's how you say it. Jimana. Sorry if I'm mispronouncing okay. it. Okay. Um, so here I have. Um, let me just start from where I sh would start. <laughs> there's some. Okay. There's some. There's some minds exploding on the chat, <laughs> but ah, they cool. look at your node graph here. <laughs> oh, cool. It, okay, this one's a, it's a small one. Okay, guys, <laughs> it's not that big one. It looks complicated, but it's very easy actually. So I'm using the Voronoi, okay? As you guys can see here, I have some parameters. It's very small uh, Voronoi frequency. I have another Worley here in the back, in the, the, the bottom part. And then I have subtract each one. So, and then I placed an add here and I use the AI anti alias noise. Why I did this? Because doing this in place in the position I can, um, let me just stop sharing just for a second. Of and, course. Uh, okay, yeah. By doing this, by doing the uh, HA is 
in the position and put in the position of the Voronoi and the Worley the lines that it's separating that it's separating itself the um, the Voronoi and the Worley noise will create kind of small details in between so this will create some variations you know and uh, if you increase the value of your uh, Anchela's noise for example let me go back to the screen now as important this okay for example if I, if you see here the value the amplitude is 30 so it's a lot it's very uh, strong value you know the frequency it's very small but the frequency it, the amplitude is very it's too big so yeah and then I could create some variations for the lines that's it probably I will be doing some tutorials of this uh, this week for on my Instagram actually okay uh, and then I place the fit um, fit range here just to sharp a bit the values you know it's like a remap or like um, a contrast you know uh, the values that's I did here and I did it for the both ones and then um, yeah and then I needed to mix those details so I created a um, AI noise again really big one and then you know I have white and black colors by using the black and white color i could use as a mask so that i used to blend the two values here voronoi and warley in the mix and then okay at this point you know i have all uh, applied for the entire cliff and then i got here the import point as you guys can see i'm using the attribute mask side is the one that I have created a bit before, you know. I used this one and I used the feature range to actually apply all those details just where I have the white color. So let me come back here to with my cliff. Sorry, it's loading. Man, we're getting a lot of questions, man. <laughs> ah, cool. So, yeah. So. so as you guys can see, for example, I have the details only in the sides, you know, because I imported the attribute from um, from here, from this guy here, from mask side. Okay, and then um, and then I create lines. Let me go to the next node. So, as you guys can see in the nature, we have rocks, and then we can have some lines also. So those kind of, sorry. Let me go here at one point. Those horizontal lines, you guys can see it's not everywhere. Because also I used a noise to apply those kind of lines just in some parts. I don't need that everywhere, you know. I don't need uh, that uh, um, detail everywhere. So as you guys can see, I have here, but I don't have here that much. So this creates a lot of um, organic uh, details. And then I have the small one. Um, let me just load it again. It's funny that you're showing that the the organic uh, nature of your scratch, scratch and and lines and everything there. There's a really interesting question here from the chat, uh, which mm -hmm. is from um, Sinat Krish. I hope that's your name, Sinat Krish. He's asking. Do you do this right away in the software, or do you sometimes start by sketching or doing some concept art? So how, how is the process normally to do something like this? Yeah, it's funny. It's a good question, actually, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Man, I, 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 I'm not a concept artist, you know? I'm, uh, I do some... But you, you would fool me, because you, you would fool me, because your stuff, your personal stuff <laughs> looks amazing. <laughs> So thank you, man. <laughs> so yeah, getting to the question. Um, usually, usually I start just throwing ideas with some reference. I yeah. grab a lot of reference. I have, I like actually. It's a good point, you know. Also, I like to take pictures. I like to see um, nature by you know just appreciating, you know, outside, um, contemplating the you know the nature, the the details of rocks. You know, sometimes I, I saw some moss in the in one tree, for example, and I kept there like for five, ten minutes just to look in the macro details. And that's something that also, I guess, uh, brings me a lot of um, inspiration, you know, 
And um, usually I don't do sketches. Usually I start throwing ideas here and uh, I'm checking if, uh, if that it's working or not as I go, you know. It, it, and now I'm, stri I'm trying to show you guys something really straight away and it looks like, no, I did this very easy. <laughs> but it's not, it's not that, you know. There's a lot of numbers inside of it node here that I needed to play, you know, to see what's, what's happened in my, in my environment. So I did a couple of tests. Of course, I'm not spending a lot of time anymore because I'm already experienced using this too. But still, I'm I'm still uh, uh, playing a lot with the numbers to see what's what's happening, you know. And sometimes I actually I deleted some nodes and start again from scratch with another approach, you know. And uh, yeah, I hope this uh, answered your question, bro. And I <laughs> and I get sure. and I guess also like for most pipelines in most companies, you would have been working against some concept art already done by someone else, isn't it? You would have gotten like concept yeah. art from the concept art department also or maybe references from the director or maybe like a, a bible reference document with everything so then you would have worked from there and then just start experimenting directly on the software isn't it yeah usually it's like that usually we take yeah. a, a concept that it, it, usually the concept is already also uh, uh approved by the client you yeah, know and then we go to this to that point and um, I'm not doing a lot of, of uh, sketches like for my environments actually because sometimes I like to just take it some 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 concepts that I like it in, in art station you know and uh, and uh, by mixing ideas different ideas I create I can create my own environment you know yeah of you course yeah. that's that's it you know uh, yeah. I like to see also pictures I like to to, to they can um, follow some some uh, natural um, photographers. I have one, by the way, Diego Rebelo and Sueli, Sueli and Tieco. They have a, a, a YouTube channel, Sueli and Tieco. They, they are very, very amazing uh, photographers. They are Brazilian photographers. They live in Vancouver and they have like a really stunning pictures to, you know, to having as a, as a reference. Um, cool. And I used it for my creation, actually. Okay, uh, any more questions before we go? Before uh, we go? You, you're going to leave Houdini now, or is that the case? Uh, almost, almost. Okay, almost. so um, I guess one question here I have, well, it's, it's, a, it's a more generic question, gener general question, but I have a, a question from Rodrigo Hurtado. He's asking, considering a studio pipeline, what would be the reason development time for a shot like this? How many days of work would you reasonably spend on creating this on a production? Well, uh, it's a good question because it's not like um, it's not like a, some 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 numbers that I can say um, <laughs> precisely because yeah. depends on the company, depends on how they organize, you know. And um, for example, I guess at Roju, we would have like enough time, and like let's say two months to work on this probably three months but not working alone you know and it would be like uh, two three artists sometimes i don't know I, actually i did some environments alone at rodeo already but um it's not all the time that happened you know and like it, it, by the way it's, it's taking two months to have this shot done but it's not only environment sometimes the environment we need to do in three three weeks one month because the later you have the lighting team that you take care of the lighting for the shot. And then you have after the lighting team, the compositors, you start working on it. And then the, the compositor might take like more three months, depends on the feedback from the client. Yeah. And then, uh, yeah. Absolutely. I mean, yeah. Yeah. It's very hard to, I, I, it's a trick. Like, I, I mean, I, I know this, it's really hard to answer that question, of course, for everyone yes. involved. It really depends on the shot, depends on the pipeline, depends also on the comments, on the on the feedback from the client, depends on so many different things. And also when you're waiting for other departments and other things, it's it's really tricky to answer. But I think I think yeah. you answered really well. Um, I guess I, I have <laughs> a, I have a more technical question here. Well, not a SME technical question. This is from Angelo uh, Bonton. He's asking, mm -hmm. sorry, Bonton, sorry, Angelo Banton. Angelo is asking, is the scattering done in Clarisse or Udini or both? He's talking about the vegetation scattering. Yeah, we are going to go there in a little bit, bro. Uh, but just to let you know, uh, I, do, I like 
mainly for example here you see mask is scattered maybe that's why you ask it yeah, um, yeah. i think that's uh, why yeah because it's there yeah yeah i created actually i created the point vop here and create the mask um like we did for the sides of the cliff i use the same principle but creating the mask for the, the the scattering this time and then i create another mask here for the river and then i like to actually store those attributes in my alembic file and then uh, i'll be showing you uh, in just a little bit angelo um that i used it to extract those data in, in clarice and then uh using that as a mask you know um and using triplanar noises i can create a procedural look that okay um let's me let me just show a bit uh don't have that much to explain about the castle but actually i wanted to show because i don't have that much um procedural um construction in in my personal work i have done some in in at rhodium and my work but not um in my personal things i want to start doing more so here uh, let me just do this so this is my tree for my uh for my castle looks small right now because uh there's some stuff that i i did uh, inside of some um some notes um so the castle let me just go here so i have the brick for the castle and then i uh, created this kind of wall and then I just create a, a randomized attribute to make some colors. And then I cut the side using uh, Boolean. I just cut the side here. And then I use the cop, cop node and then create this kind of thing. And then I using another Boolean. Actually, here I have the door. Um, let me just see the thing. Yeah, I have the door here. And then I just use it to boolean my stuff my my wall and then uh, let me just go to this side so here i have the arc for the, the castle and actually let me let me go a bit back sorry guys for that so this is not the same castle as you can see in the shot yeah. i mean it's the same it's the same castle as you can see the shot, but it's not exactly like the one in the actual shot. It's much more simplified one, you know, like uh, I worked for the camera, like uh, the camera was like here, you know, it's very, uh, very far away, you know, and I, I just wanted the same um, sort of detail that we have on, on the shot. So, and then, um, yeah, let me just uh, go a bit really quickly because I want to show some Clarice stuff. So, and here I have the arc for the, um, the castle, for the door, sorry. Then I merged with some other stuff that I have on the top here. So probably it's, uh, uh, sorry, uh, yeah, it's here. So I have this guy here on the top. I have some, um, pillars here so the pillar it's just the pillar is here <laughs> so the pillar is like that i start from the circle and then i created more another circles here the boolean then create this kind of detail oops oops and then um i boolean then again create another boolean just for the small tiny details no one you see that in the shot but uh, <laughs> it's it's there so it's pretty common right uh you go we do a lot of details and no one see that later <laughs> <No>. <laughs> but, what a blur it's the focus damn no yeah, one will ever see or it. dark oh, it's very dark <laughs> <laughs> yeah and then like i create this guy here and get the details and then i just copy and then i have this guy here done and then I just scale it down. And then uh, let me just merge here. So I create very simple, just a um, cylinders. Um, let me go down. If I see something that it's worth to show. I create the basic. Uh, let me just go here. Yeah, and then we have the merged guys together. 
And then like I used the same wall that we did at the beginning, as you guys can see, it's going the line here and then go to this part. So in here, in this, is, this is small node here, let's see inside of this. <laughs> I have those, <laughs> <laughs> I have more stuff inside of this guy here. So yeah, and um, yeah, I created some, some uh, boxes here just to break up the windows and then I create this. But I mean, it's procedural work here, but to be honest, it's not that fully, fully, fully procedural because like it's possible change. It's very, very easy to change anything here, but I don't have that controls, slides, stuff like that, just, you know, to change scales and um, add stuff as, uh, as I change the number, stuff like that. It's, um, um, it's a procedural, but a simplified procedural work. <laughs> um, and actually, guys, I did the environment in 12 days, <laughs> not two months, nothing, not a one month of work. So it was just two, less than two weeks. Um, so and then I just copy those guys here and create more volumes. That's it. You know, and create those details in the border. I'd like to go more in depth, but uh, we have just one hour. I mean, I guess we already we, we already did that one hour. <laughs> oh my god, man! <laughs> <laughs> I was just like letting you know on the chat that we already done one hour. Um, oh my god! Yeah. Man. So, but it's fine. It's fine. As long as you want to continue, we can continue a bit more. Uh, okay. One thing I wanted to ask you regarding this, actually. So we have uh, Mahmad Mahmad Dej Dilshad. I am so sorry if I pronounced your name incorrectly. So Mahmad is asking on an optimization on, on an optimization side, could you make your models more detailed when they're closer to camera using like for example ZBrush and make the cliff less detailed on the background when it's away from camera? Do you so I guess that's the, this question. Do you actually use those kind of optimizations where you have more detail on the front and less detail on the back? Do you do those kind of things? Uh, actually, not because the camera is going. It's it's going from the start of the cliff and then going to the back of the cliff, you know. And yeah. um, and there's one point about this. For example, when I was using another package, another software to render, um, I was I was feeling like a blocked, you know, in my crea in my creative, because I needed to take care about polygons all the time. I needed to take take care about oh my god, this is so heavy. It will take longer to render, and uh, that's why I like Clarice in this to render because with Clarice, Clarice don't care about polygons. I, I will be showing you guys in just a bit. So I, I guess we can we can go there. Let's that Yeah, we actually I was what I was gonna what, what I was gonna say is that, you know, as as people know from my streams, we never we always have when we're streaming for more than an hour, we always do a little short break so that people can stretch their legs and get some water. So I, mm -hmm. if, if you're happy to stick around for a bit longer, because we have a lot of questions, I'm mm -hmm. happy to do like a short break so we can all stretch our legs and get some water. Uh, yeah. We always do a, a, a responsible stream here. So, um, and before you jump into Clarice, so why, are, you, yeah. are you okay with that, Ali? Yeah, yeah, of course. Cool. Let's, let's, uh, let's let's do that then. Let's, let's do that. Yeah. We have a lot of questions, so I'm going to like. Uh, most people say here that they would like to see this for 24 hours. This stream, we're not going to be here for 24 hours, folks. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so sorry so, about that. <laughs> so yeah, let's let's uh, yeah, just stop sharing your sh sharing your screen for a second, and uh, let's just. Okay. Uh, um, yeah, so like I said, Ali, we have a lot of questions and we'll go through them and I'm making, I'm marking them all here. We might not go through all of them. Okay. I just want everyone to know because I think we already have more than 50 questions. So, uh, we have to do the second half, man. Yeah, we exactly. We're going to have to do hard. part two. So for yeah. now, I'm going to advise everyone to stretch their legs, get some water, look away from the, your screen for a few minutes. It's very important for you to keep your he a healthy check always. So make sure you stretch your legs so you get some blood flowing. We'll be right back. Uh, it won't be as long as it usually is. Usually I do a 10 minute break. We'll just do a five minute break. OK, so we'll be right back and I'll see you all in about five minutes.
Okay, we are back. Thank you so much for still sticking around. Uh, and uh, yeah, we just did a really short break. We're gonna go back to Ali and continue the stream. We have a lot. We know we have a lot of questions. Okay, everyone, don't don't worry. We're gonna get to it. Um, we're gonna have a lot of questions in the end. But now I think Ali really wants to show you guys a bit of Clarice. I think most people here are asking about Clarice anyway. So uh, let's just jump in right in. So you're ready. You have the floor, Ali. Go for it. Yes. Cool. Let's go for Clarice. Man, I love this software. Um, and actually, just, let me just see if I can close and my... I, and I guess, like, I'll start right away with a question because a lot of people have asked this. I'll start right away. So a yeah. question, I have a question from Old Zen. That's a cool name. <laughs> Old Zen is asking, my company is moving to Clarice, uh, from Clarice to Udini. Is it still worth learning Clarice? That's his first question. Um, is it still worth uh, learning Clarice? And, and uh, I guess, what do you think? What do you think about that? Man, I... Um... It's, it's, it's a difficult question, you know, because the things... Depends what you are going to do, which company you are going to work on, you know. Uh, there are some companies, uh, big companies like IBM, I know they use the, the NAG, they still use Clarice. Uh, uh, Rodeo probably will keep using Clarice for longer. Um, I'm, let me just stop sharing my screen. Yeah, I can see that it's crashed a little bit there. It's fine. Yeah. I, have a, I have a meme for that, you know. Whenever something crashes, we have our, our, our customary uh, garbage truck on fire. <laughs> yeah, as everyone okay, but, knows. <laughs> yeah, but I'm back now. Okay, cool. cool. Um, no, I know it's a tough yeah. question. I know it's a tough question, and it's not an easy question to answer. But I guess the main thing yeah, really for me is like Clarice is not. It's not like uh, not a lot of people. Sometimes not a lot of people are aware of it, and a lot of people are not really using it. That's the, I guess that's where that question is coming from. Yes, yes. It's not that popular uh, for uh, artists out there, but it's very popular in the companies. And if you if you the guys watch uh, uh, Clarice show real, they will see that man a lot of big blockbusters they used Clarice. You know? Yeah, absolutely. Because because Clarice, because Clarice is very powerful. As you guys can see, for example, uh, in my home computer now on, on this uh, project here, I have forty six million billions of polygons in, <laughs> in uh, uh, primitives actually in my in my screen. You know, it's Man, it's three millions of geometries <laughs> and it's 40 billions, more than 40 billions of polygons. And like, my that computer was- That is insane. Was, That's insane. See, That's insane. I'm rotating my, 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 my screen and uh, checking it out my environment. It's everything there. There's a lot of stuff that you don't see. But let's say the client to ask, uh, uh, I create the environment here for this camera, or, you know, like uh, my camera, it's like, uh, I can select my camera here actually. I'm um, just go. So I can go here and just, you know, move my camera and see everything I'm doing. You know, I have a lot of details here. And actually, I can change the color in my screen in, in Clarice just to see better what I'm doing, you know. And uh, there's a lot of stuff that we don't see in the actual shots. For example, that the veins, you know, I have created here, we don't see in the shot. Um, and by the way, I forgot to show you guys one thing. Uh, this, for example, um, and now I've closed my Houdini, so it should take longer to show again. But I can I can show later. So this, for example, it's a uh, is a one of the rocks that I have created procedurally in Houdini. It's uh, of course I did the, the reduced polygons for this one, but. It's not that reduced because you can see a one million, uh, one, yeah, one million six um, polygons. So it's a it's a very um, big amount of geometry for another package. In Clarice, we don't care about polygons actually, you know. Um, and then uh, what I would say, okay, yeah. And talking about uh, procedural work, I guess someone have asked it uh, before. So let me just open the, um, so yeah, uh, by the way, let me just go off a bit more in depth with Clarice. So Clarice, usually, usually you guys can see here, I have a couple of folders that we call contexts in, in Clarice. And here I have MagScan. I didn't use MagScan assets for this shot. 
I use the only plants and surface shaders, surface textures. And uh, yeah, the rocks are everything were made in Houdini by myself procedurally um, as the rest. The heads I have created in, in ZBrush, sculpted in ZBrush. And the Clarice, you will use that, the context to show you what you want to, to render. For example, I have all the assets here in my asset context. They are all here, but they are not being rendered. Once I have rendered, it's only where I have called environment that are um, being displayed in here. For example, if I go to another 3D view, for example, here, and uh, let's say I want to see only, uh, not the environment, but let's go to the asset. I want to see actually, well, let's see one thing, cliff canal, for example. I can throw this context here and I will be checking only the cliff, you know? And then uh, by doing that, I can actually start creating my look dev in Clarice. You know, and I guess before um, you, before you jump in, there's one thing I wanted to ask you for those of, for people listening that don't really know much about Clarice, mm -hmm. how are you bringing all of this to Clarice? By the way, like, could you sh tell people how does that work? Like, what kind of file yeah, formats and yeah, what kind of pipeline workflow happens from Houdini to Clarice so that people understand how yeah. it works? Yeah, this is something important, and I would uh, I took care about this during my course, for example, to make the workflow and the pipeline really clear for everyone, even the junior artists, they will be able to understand uh, the, the workflow and the pipeline, how it works properly. And uh, um, I use the Alamp files to export everything. Mm -hmm. I export from Houdini Alamp files, and then uh, in Clarice, I could actually read all those uh, files um, in attributes that I used, for example, the masks that I have created in, in Houdini, I can use here everything. Um, Really easy. So it's all know. directly yeah. in Lambic, and okay, that's cool. Directly in Lambic, yeah, yeah. exactly, yeah. exactly. And and when I uh, I do download, for example, let's say uh, the grasses, for example, I did download uh, from uh, Magscan for the grasses, and those grasses are everything in in, in uh, Alembic. And this is like also a procedural work because, for example, here now it's already in local because it, this file here is the same one that I used. Uh, in my to send it to the, the the render farm, you know. And by the way, Fox Render Farm will give hundred bucks of points for everyone that you buy my course. That's a good things to say. Um, and like um, here, for example, the cliff it's not uh, um, it, it's not in, in referenced yet anymore. It's not referenced yet anymore, but it's already here. But for example, let's say um, I'm working here in Clarice and uh, the client asked to change something. I can change again in Houdini and export. Once I exported again Clarice, uh, in, from Houdini in Clarice, you'll be loading automatically here. So I have a button just to reload stuff. Uh, just to give you uh, an, an idea what I'm saying, it's like, let's say I'm going here to reference file and let's say if I can take one of those guys here for example uh you see blah, blah, the term houdini other cliff abc and then i have um let me see which one can take a waterfall just a second geo cliff canal okay i will be loading this guy So now you guys can see here, I have Cliff Canal referenced from my hard drive. And any change I needed to do, I just needed to reload here automatically. If my Clarice is closed, when I open, it will, become, it will be showing up automatically. That's a good thing. And um, yeah, let me just delete this guy here. So this, this, so that this means that people can be working on the background. Other artists could be working on these assets, and you can just be like glad. Exactly. Yeah, having everything. Yeah, that's really cool. Exactly. If you are doing a collab, for example, working with uh, some friends, they can work together. You know, it, this that was the workflow. Uh, if the people watch my breakdown, uh, my Dino Dinosaur breakdown, for example, they can have a better understand the the workflow. Uh, uh, 
how the company used to do it, you know, when they do a big shots, uh, when you have more than one artist working in, this, in something at the same time, you know, it's the um, professional workflow. Um, okay, uh, let me just show the, the shading of this guy here for the cliff, for example. Okay, this is very complex one, and sorry <laughs> about that. <laughs> it's gonna be it's gonna be hard to explain actually because uh, it's really quick time like to show something, but I will be trying my best to do it. Okay, so as you guys can see, I have three shaders. So this guy's here, this one here, and this one here. Those guys are just three shaders, but this one here it's the main one. And this one here, this part at the beginning is the, the, the texture that came from uh, MagScan. And then I have triplanars. And then I have here, um, let me see if I'm using that. Yeah. And then I have here extract repeaters. This node here, it's the node that allowed me to extract some uh, data from Houdini. So here, for example, I'm, I'm using the same name that I have exported from Houdini, that it's mask scatter. So the mask scatter, I used it actually also to, to put the grass on top of my rocks, you know, on top of my, my terrain, because it's not separated geometries. It, it's everything the same stuff. So uh, I, but I know that those flattened areas could be snow, could be uh, just dirty. In my case, it's the grass. So I just place a texture, uh, grass texture there. You know, uh, let me just see if I can preview that. Just a second. It's loading. It's take a bit long here to load, depends on the size of this, the, the, the files that you are working on. But once you have this loaded, it's, you see, it's uh, it's there. Oh, the, the, the previews is a bit shit. Oh. It's not uh, that perfect, you know, but uh, you can have billions of polygons in your screen for free, you know. <laughs> uh, and exactly. you can. And here, for example, uh, it's the mask from uh, from uh, Houdini, you know, the mask scatter that later on I used also to scatter my grasses. And that and that this is uh, came me back to the question when someone asked me about the the the, the, the scattering how. Um, if I use the Houdini or I use the Clarice, man, I use the Clarice because it's very, very easy, you know. In Clarice, um, let me just um, load one stuff here really quickly. Um, okay, let me go to the Env. So, and here in Env, all those guys here that I placed some different colors, it's uh, different scatterers. And to scatter, I used just basically principal nodes. They are point clouds and then scatter. Point clouds, it's those guys that um, store the jump, the, 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 the position of my grasses. So for example, I placed here, just the scatter. So you guys can see it's just where I want. So I extract propeters again, you see here, I'm using this one and then on point cloud, I choose the geometry where I want my scatter, um, my points scattered. Um, and then uh, what else here? Okay, this one, it's there. And then I have here the color correction. Actually, the color correction is just to, to desaturate, but actually here I just, I didn't use, but anyways. Um, and uh, yeah, this color correction actually is the the texture for my uh, for my scatterer, you know. Uh, and then I use this scatterer uh, node. It's actually the one that import all those grasses uh, here. And you see those uh, this small icon that I have here. It's it's a combiner one. So this uh, combiner, it's um. It's the way that we used it to put one uh, more than one asset in the same place. For example, um, talking about that, for example, I take the rocks. I did three rocks procedurally in Houdini. So no, um, 
I'm trying to not make it boring, guys. Sorry for that, but it's a very um, um, it's a it's a diff difficult subject talking about. So uh, here I have stand rocks, for example. Let me just do take those guys here. So here, oh, by the way, there is one here without texture, but we don't see in the camera, anyways. Um, and then here I have all the rocks. Okay, it's um, all the rocks here. Is it's it's standing. Um, it's a uh, combiners. They are combined. And then I have in asset, I have created one big combiner with all the rocks inside of it. Let me just go here in my asset. Yeah. Here I have a combiner with all the rocks inside of it. And I used this to create a position to scatter my grass, to scatter pebbles, scatter trees, the same with the same guy. So um, that's why when I came to the shot, for example, here I have also the grass on top, te grass texture. And uh, yeah, I guess that's it. And um, if the people have a question, you will be very helpful. <laughs> <laughs> I, have I, can, I have I can, some questions. I can yeah. know where I go, you know. No, no, because... I have some questions. So uh, mm -hmm. Freddy is, uh, well, first of all, uh, I have to just say that uh, Fran, uh, Fran Yoshi, which usually comes to the show all the time. So thank you so much for coming, Fran Yoshi. He's actually saying that, is, this is not a question, but he's actually saying, I am one of those guys that didn't even knew about Clarice. And this is really important that everyone on the audience here listens to. Clarice is really used in production in a lot of films, like Ali mentioned. You guys yeah. all should go and check it out because it, it's a very powerful tool and it is becoming slowly more and more industry standard. So for those of you who don't even know what Clarice is, I would really recommend you to go to the Isotropics uh, website. Uh, I know they have a trial. Maybe try it, you know, maybe give it a go because it's a very powerful tool. Um, but yeah, going to the question, Freddy asks, what render engine are you using in Clarice? Reese. Um, so that's basically his question. I already know this answer, but I just wanted you to answer. <laughs> yeah, of course. Man, I, I mean, Clarice, um, it has uh, the proper render inside of it, but it's very, very similar uh, Arnold in Maya or in, in Katana. So it's like a global example. illumination based uh, yeah, uh, it's render, the same right? Principle, yeah, PBR stuff and the same, same kind of way to build the shade inside of Clarice is going to be in, in, in Maya or in Katana. But in my opinion, it's easier, much more easier doing the shader in, in Clarice than in any other package, to be honest. Mm -hmm. It's very, very quick, quick to do. And like, uh, and talking about Clarice, for example, I'm, I'm now we are talking, uh, I had a meeting with Dan uh, yesterday, and we are now planning something to give to the students of my course, you know, because this course is something like, um, and I guess we could could go to the course, no? Because the the course we can show more stuff of Clarice, and then I can, yeah, of course, of course. I'm I'm, I'm gonna put it. I'm, go, yeah, the, the I'm gonna put it on the background going. So um, can you just share a screen with me. Then when, then yeah, then so can... of course. Well, no, I can't. Well, sorry, I can't share your screen now, uh, because if I share my screen, then it won't work for the camera. Sorry, I should have done this uh, in a better way, but I can't do that. <laughs> but uh, but what I can do is like people are now watching. Uh, well, sorry, this is the wrong one. I opened by the mistake. I opened the Dino thing. Let me just gonna open uh, first. Um, apologies, everyone. I'm just like loading let's, up. Let's the... let's let, let's do one thing. When you do the play in your side just to tell me uh because then i can i can speak can try to speak at the same time what, what yeah yeah things. well first first of all um mm -hmm. what i'm showing right now which i'm looping is the actual end result so this is the final shot just the final shot not the time lapse mm -hmm. so for everyone listening now this is the shot that the course will have and uh, i guess why don't you Tell us a little bit about that before I even jump into the time lapse, which I'll let you know when I'm playing it. This is the final mm -hmm. render, right? And that's that's the objective of everyone doing this course, isn't it, Ali? Man, oh, talking about this course, I, I spent like seven months doing this. I would do this uh, as I did in Numer Numenor in two weeks. I could do this uh, shot in three weeks, you know, uh, working. And I built from scratch. I put a lot of love, a lot of effort because I, I came back a couple of times uh, re, re, 
rebuilding some classes to make it very, very clear for everyone. Because this was one plan of my life, you know, like doing a course and helping the, the junior, the intermediate artists achieve their results in their projects, you know. And um and yeah, man, like uh that's that's was the, the plan for for for, for And this so this course. shot and that people are now watching, like which is this ma like this beautiful environment with the castle and the lake and the river and everything. This is the typical kind of shot that that you would have done on on Rings of Power of or Rings. yeah on Lord yeah. of the Rings on Rings of Power, and mm -hmm. so I think that's why it's so so. And why don't you tell people like what kind of softwares and what kind of like uh, workflows are going to be showing to develop this shot? You know, you're going to go through a lot of softwares, aren't you, to to try to yes. develop this entire thing? Yeah. How about we go to the the, the clip because the clip yeah, we yeah. will Shows we everything. answer this yeah, question yeah. probably more question that people might have. Yeah. Uh, when I'm, you do play, when you do play, please tell me and then I will play it together. Of course, of course. Um, I'm gonna put it in loop, so you know, so it's gonna mm -hmm. be in loop. Um, and I'm gonna start playing in three. So one, two, three, playing it. Okay, uh, with the cursor, we start grabbing some some uh, references, you know, how the texture um, would be done um, at the beginning and uh, all the reference for the, 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 the environment itself. And then I'll go to talking about the pipeline, which software we can use and uh, show them they can have another type of softwares, you know, just to do the layouts. And then I show the layout workflow. I show the Houdini workflow and then Clarice workflow. Really, really clear, you know, designed for everyone understanding um, the process, how, the whole process of the, the work. And then this one, uh, uh, the castle that I did, um, and it should be free for everyone. They Everyone could take it, and then they will be able also to do the, the procedural look dev for the castle. And then I start like creating the layout. I place some this uh, red, stuff were the the reference for the scale and then in still in maya i started building just the blocking of terrain you know just to have something to show in my dailies you know i'm pretending that i'm working on an industry here on my on this project so we started from really simple stuff like in maya creating the layout placing the camera you know doing some animation you know trying to find the the, the photo of the shot so yeah, here you guys can see I'm just improving, you know, trying to match the concept that I did before. You know, I took some arts from other artists and then placed together a couple of them and then just created my own art, my own concept just for this environment. Uh, actually, it was just a guide, you know, it was not the, I don't want my, my concept as a final result, but actually a point of start. And then I, I will teach something about camera, positioning the camera, you know, and then uh, once we have uh, um, like all the details and camera animated, I felt like we needed to improve more the layout. We went back. It's kind of daily process, you know, kind of same way that we used it to work in the industry. Same kind of thing, improving, teach some curves, you know, the guys can do it in, in software. And then here is just an overview of um, Houdini high fields. I show them uh, start nodes, to race nodes, um, um, noise, different noise, how they can play with each node, how they can actually mix different nodes, how they can import objects and apply as a mask, as a, a projections. Um, in our case, as we did uh, for layout, the layout in Maya, we are going to project the detail, the, the layout in Houdini. And uh, that's make very, very, very easy because then we can import also the camera from Maya and take the same same result and by the way i will teach also how that we can uh we need to scale it down the the overall um construction in houdini because that's also make uh help us to save memory to save processing times you know and um yeah i'll be teaching that you guys can see here i'm just projecting uh projecting the the the, the tails in the mountain um creating mass creating the tails creating um all the features that i want always checking some references um yeah more details more layers as you guys can see i'm placing more layers i came back to maya to check and fix 
some parts of the terrain that was not uh, working well. I kept doing this in Maya because I could do it in Houdini, but usually uh, the layout team needed to change when you needed to change something, you know? And then beside, instead of changing in Houdini, I changed in Maya again, trying to, to keep the pipeline workflow, the workflow as a, as a, like pretending that we are working in a company. Okay, then uh, create, this is the, the final result of the terrain, of the, 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 the cliffs, and also the foreground, then uh, we don't have that path in the, the 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 ground path in the concept, but I placed that because I got like this would bring more story for um, storytelling for our environment. Then I was teaching Clarice. Clarice, I would teach by uh, first creating a template that will help you guys create any kind of environment. I would teach how to create a, um, a library. I will be I'll be giving uh, uh, my the, the library in my art station also. Um, yeah, and then I will teach how to create procedural textures for the leaves, for example, having different plants, but having different colors, but using the same textures. But you can create variations procedurally by using point data from each asset that you have I have created. Um, and then um, yeah, and then they place the castle. We started importing stuff in in, in Clarice, and then uh, place some lighting. You know, place uh, just to feel the volume is much better. Then we can see actually how the environment is going. You know, with some lighting, it's when you feel the environment actually. And um, yeah, and then place some um, placeholders to create shadows for um, like shadow from the the clouds. And um, let me see more. Yeah, creating volumes, creating lighting. This is the castle, the procedural shader of the castle. I hope you guys can see the same thing that I'm saying. <laughs> yeah, they are. Yeah, it's exactly in uh, the same cool. place. Yeah. Yeah, cool. Uh, yeah, the, the, the look dev in the castle, it's fully procedural, just using triplanars. Um, there were just one piece that needed to use a UV that was the, 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 the roof that was not in the good position. Then I decided just to create a UV, straight UV for that. And then like using ambient occlusion, curvature, we can create stands, we can create more um, dirty to the, the concretes and then start shading the, the, the water. And the water, it's animated, but it's not simulation. It's actually procedural texture animated. It's just a couple of noises mixed together and creating uh, that sense that it's a uh, uh, water flowing <laughs> but actually it's just a it's just a, a noise animated and some some of them are uh, they are like broken a bit creating more roughness in some areas and more like a um, flat uh, water in some places that's uh we'll be doing during the 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 class and then also i'll be teaching some like coding stuff really really small ones just to create um uh, procedural uh, applied shader. It's called the shading layer in Clarice. It's very, very powerful. For example, in, for the castle, I did the names for the, each geometry, you know, and then uh, automatically to take the texture that I want. And then, as you guys can see, I placed the rocks. I was just balancing the, the color. You guys can see it's very, very realistic, you know, like a very, very realistic, even without composition, you know. That's uh, really something that I really want to do because I'm not that really good compositor, you know. Um, I'm trying to my best to do D3D and let the comp the compers doing their work <laughs> <laughs> because it's a very complex subject, you know. You go. <laughs> yeah, but so, I guess I guess they can get all the AOVs and they, then they can take from there and ex yeah, exactly. exactly. It's important yeah. again. It's important to know something. So yeah. that's what I'm trying to do, and uh, at least I can show something, you know, and they, they can show also. You see, guys, uh, we have the path there with the, the with shader. You know, it's it was using the extract uh, um, repeaters again from Houdini, um, and here we have the grasses and the scatter everything together. Plants, bushes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, no, it's okay. Oh, you go. Let's go. Okay. Uh, cool. So, 
yeah and then they start scattering more stuff you know i'll be teaching how uh, you see here is much more by hand ex like just painting you know like in houdini is very complex to painting scattering stuff like that in clarice is very you know like giving a lot of freedom you know just painting like a you know like a canvas you know <laughs> that was my feeling you know and uh, yeah i just painting some bushes flowers stuff like that and uh yeah and then scatter more stuff um let's see yeah for the background yeah that's a word that something worth to say it's about like a um, uh, split the, the work you know like uh, I worked first for the foreground and then for the background and then I took just a bit of care for the very background you know and uh, because also the background will be uh, I'll be doing kind of the matte painting later on you know um, but yeah again it's uh, everything procedural work you know you see the mask that I'm creating in, in, in Clarice is the same type of uh, uh, same type of uh, mask that we have creating in Houdini, but here in Clarice it's it's um, it's very powerful to 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 use it. Cool. Uh, if the people have questions between there's or there's a lot of questions, yes, but I oh, was yes. just like I didn't want to interrupt you, of course, didn't want okay, to interrupt uh, you. So uh, do you want to jump into some questions? Yeah, maybe we can, man, because, uh, for example, here we are with the trees, we have volumes already, you know, placed there. And then, um, let me see, uh, yeah, we placed some VDB clouds that I have created, especially for our our course. Um, and uh, what else? What else? Yeah, as you guys can see, I'm placing by hand, you know. Not everything is automatically and procedural, because we need to, to put the hand and place everything where you actually want not only not only where the computer give you <laughs> the chance to put so that's something that we use to do uh, like place some stuff by hand and this is uh now it's uh the part you like it man it's um, <laughs> uh some nuke stuff i didn't uh create my build actually it was a very simple um I, I don't I didn't want to complicate it. And you're, the, do, you're the, doing the, an ACES workflow all the way, aren't you? Yes, yeah, yeah. exactly. That's a good point. Yeah. I was using ACES all, all the time and also like, um, yeah, I didn't I didn't build my my build uh, on on. It's on funny. YouTube. It's funny that you're saying that, you know, like just the other day, I was a few weeks ago, I was at the view conference in Italy presenting and uh -huh. some of the questions I had from people were rely, rela related to ACES, where some people were asking me, is it even worth it using ACES? Is it dying off? And mm -hmm. I really want to categorically tell everyone that ACES is the industry standard right now. Like there's yes. no, it's, there's no going around it. There's eventually you'll have to deal with it. I'm just like yeah. letting everyone know that if you don't like ACES, too bad. You're going to have to do it anyway because everyone is using ACES. I've been using ACES for three and a half years now and I will never go yeah. back, ever. I will never go back. Yeah, no, know. and actually it's it's impossible. You get more realism than using, yeah. uh, without using ACES. You Absolutely. Know, ACES give, give a lot of realism for the colors and all the balance, everything. It's very... It's, it's, I mean, yeah. And I can mandatory. see you, you also go it's through, mandatory. you also go through the background matte painting as well in Nuke, yes. which is cool. Yeah. 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 It's very simple. Not, nothing fancy, you know, uh, it's not a class actually guys. It's not a class of matte painting. It's uh, it was just a breakdown. I shone a bit, but it's not a, it, it was not the focus of the course. The course was building 3D environments and uh, you guys could do actually the, also the mountains in the background, they could do in, in Houdini and uh doing from there you know in Clarice it's possible it's possible to do it and then yeah. the birds that I added it was uh, something that I did in, in, in 3ds max really quickly and then uh yeah we can then cool. we can stop playing yeah I'm playing I, I just Get stopped back. just now cool man well this is this is fantastic work congratulations I mean I I oh, thank you man I think it looks amazing I think you know uh, I, you should know already that 
like a lot of questions have to do with the fact when will this course be available that's most most of the questions um, we have or people asking when is it available can they buy it now where can i find it so i have andrea asking where can they find the course i have like vitali ask where is the course going like there's a lot of people asking about that so yeah. why don't why don't you tell people a little bit about when is this course going to be available and where will it be available you know <laughs> how about how about you ask manny and umberto <laughs> <laughs> well, they give me the burden to say that. <laughs> well, let, let's start with okay. the easy one. Where will it be yeah. available? Yeah, I mean, like, uh, first and first, um, I, I was planning, you know, like last year to create a, an environment course. And it uh, was very hard to find one way to do it in the best way as possible, to create the best quality as possible. Because I, I don't, I did not want my course to be just one more. I actually, I really, really want to have the best course, but actually the one that might help a lot the people get a job, you know, or even uh, growing in their position. And then I got the, um, the contact from uh, Domestica. And then I start speaking with them, like we start like uh, having our, our um, how can I say, um, friendship, you no, know? like negotiations and talk. And then they, I was, I was very happy actually because they have a price very affordable in all those courses they have in their platform. Yeah. And this makes me very, very happy because that's was something that the people might are passing by now, you know, like uh, it's if you have like a really really expensive uh, uh course for the people for everyone it's not that easy for everyone buy it you know but uh i just wanted to give a good point for of start for everyone like taking my course really sh affordable price you know and then uh now getting through the the way so <laughs> i guess i guess uh probably in a couple of weeks one month um, not more than that i guess like in two or three weeks we yeah. are going to have the the launching yeah uh, the, the the course released uh, and i and i guess now... i guess i guess it would be very fair to say that people should definitely follow you on social media yes. for them to get a latest latest news about when this is course is going to yeah. drop so Everyone needs to go and follow Ali on Twitter, on Instagram, and on YouTube. He's going to be yeah. announcing it, and I'm actually going to like show that on the screen. So uh, be, sh be sure to follow um, uh, Ali Barbosa. It's Ali Barbosa underscore uh, ENV environment for uh, Instagram. He's going to be, yeah. of course, promoting it there. On Twitter, you can also follow him. Um, I think oh, it's Oh, I didn't use Twitter anymore, that much. I use Alarm. Just a Instagram and <laughs> well, I'm gonna and, say it uh, anyway. So you have Alore Barbosa uh, underscore art as well, and then of course the art station as well. I'm showing it on the screen, by yeah. the way, as well. Thanks, man. Um, and of course your YouTube channel as well, uh, which yeah. is can be found here. So let me just uh, open it up here. So your YouTube and channel. And there's a LinkedIn also. LinkedIn yeah, there's a very, LinkedIn very, as well. Yeah, so Ali yeah. Barbosa on uh, on YouTube as well. So please go and follow Ali because Ali is gonna be posting about this course and i'm also going to be posting about the course so if any, anyone follows me in social media we will definitely be posting everyone for the course when it's available and not to mention that you know i'm sure i'll have ali back as well when we are closer to the course and and he can come over and talk a bit more about the course you know so so i'll, I'll yeah. definitely invite him over again to the show and and you guys will have more chances to ask questions um but yeah and so it's so over also right <laughs> we can get over the question then for the not to answer the questions also you know uh, yeah but and and, and um, i was just about to say um something um yeah and and uh, like for example the course you will be releasing okay and um we are now editing fi finishing the editing of the course and make sure that we have a good uh, content in our core in the course and um just to be just to make everyone knows about this is something that is important to say like the course the platform is the course online is pre recorded course but i will be i will be there in the in the, in the community you know when certain question if i see everyone like they're having the same kind of issues or same kind of problems that they the course is not like uh that clear i can do you know i will, probably this will happen like uh the people might have some different uh problems and then i will be happy to do a, a video and then just updating the course. You know, you, you go, you, we do this a lot. Oh, like yeah. Just, yeah. Up, yeah, just yeah. updating stuff, you know, 
uh, if I see new ways to do something also, I will be updating the course. That's uh, something that we are going to do. Cool. And it's important they follow on Instagram because in Instagram, I will be like doing... You're going to be posting, yeah. About, yeah. Yeah, I, I posted on the chat now. So all your links are on the chat as well. Please go and subscribe to Ali. It. Please go and follow him. So Ali... I know this stream is a lot longer than we plan. <laughs> we wow. planned for an hour. We already yeah. been we've been already here for two hours. But could you, do you mind if we do a few questions? A lot of people ask questions, and I I man. think we should go for a few at least. So oh, man. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna go from the beginning because a lot of people have asked their questions for a long time and they're still waiting for it. So mm -hmm. so I'm gonna ask for the beginning. So I have um. I have a question here. Let's see here. Um, Rodrigo Hurtado is asking, could you summarize? And I guess we need to summarize because we're going to do it like rapid fire. We're going to answer these questions really quick now. So Rodrigo is asking, could you summarize the main technical and artistic skills required for a senior environment artist position? What would be the technical and artistic skills required to be you, I guess? <laughs> Yeah, I guess, I guess first, we, you need to be able to work alone without that much of notes. This is the first thing. And then, okay, you know this, and then you need to think, okay, what tools I need to learn. In my case, my day by day of work, I used a, a couple of them. I used, um, let's start from beginning, Maya, it's the first one. Second one, Houdini. Third one, Clarice. Fourth one, Katana. Speed tree, substance painter. That are those main shot. Oh, and sorry, nuke and <laughs> then nuke. Um, yeah, those are six softwares, I guess. Yeah, man. But I remember five years ago, I was using 20 softwares, different softwares. Yeah, and then of it course. was uh, 3ds Max, Marvelous Designer. Oh, ZBrush also, but I'm not using that much ZBrush, I'm not having the opportunity to use the brush in the show that I'm working right now. And that's something that happened, you know, like you study a lot of the brush and then you take a, a project that you need to work and then you stay like six months without open the brush. That's yeah. something that might happen. Uh, the same thing might happen with Houdini also, you know, and the uh, inverse, you can go to 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 the brush and forget Houdini for a couple But that's, of that's the software. What about the, 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 the artistic skills? What, do you, what are your yeah. opinions about that? Man, artistic, artistic skills, I guess, the people need to have a good understanding about photograph for yeah. environment. It's uh, it's essential. Like yeah. if you have a camera, even your mobile, you you you, you have to go out and take pictures because this is this is very, it's a it's a it's a kind of training, you know, practice you yeah. doing this. Yeah. Um, and it's what really good advice because you you'll be surprised by the amount of students that don't do that. You know, I I mean I have thousands of students over the last decades, and mm -hmm. a lot of people just say, "Oh, but I just want to learn the software. I don't need to take photos." Like a lot of people yeah. really focus too much on the software and comp like photography. Will, like Ali is saying, it's so important. It will teach Enter. you composition. It will teach you color. It will teach you about light. And it will yeah. teach you how things look in the real world, because otherwise, how are you going to achieve realism if you don't know how things look? You know, so go yeah. out of your office, go out of your room and take photos outside. I think that's the yeah. the most important thing, really. Well, one thing I, I really like at the end, I, I'm, I'm starting having those guys like uh, uh, I have Diego, as I mentioned before. Yeah. And then like, uh, um, I, I like to see the guys painting in using watercolor. Yeah, and I saw a couple of, of people like uh, go out, for example, in nature, and then uh, starting painting watercolor. I'm I've been doing it with my wife sometimes. You know, sometimes we we go here in the in the, in the living room. You know, we take uh, um, some cakes, uh, coffee. You know, and and painting together and talking, having fun with my wife, and just painting some with watercolor. I didn't show for anyone did my watercolor, <laughs> but. <laughs> But I'm doing, you know, like I'm doing this. It's relaxing, you know. It's very chill stuff to do. But also, it's something that training your 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 brain when you have some challenges in in your digital work to do. And um, and this is yeah, man. I, I I won't say like oh, you don't need to take a course of something uh, like a, 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 a let's say a higher degrees with 
art or something like this. Uh, it's good if you have. Yeah, of course. You don't, of course. You yeah. know, it's uh, it's good. Yeah. Uh, but you don't need to go that further, you know, like no, that. No. But <laughs> no. I mean, I, I treasure it quite a lot. Like I have an art degree. I have a, mas a master's in fine arts and it has helped my career immensely. So I yeah. think, you know, coming from Portugal where university is free, you should just go for it. Because if it's free, man, go for it. Don't even waste your time because yeah. not a lot of countries are have free university in Europe most countries in Europe have it and you should take the advantage but it's definitely not mandatory for you to have a degree of course not like it's not mandatory yeah. but it, it does help in certain aspects you know yeah man and there's one thing I, I think is the best one I guess you know I said in the beginning of the, our our webinar uh, about like personal projects man yeah. I have I'm being work since 2005. You know, it's uh, most, it's getting almost 20 years, you know, it's 17 years working on this field and I'm still doing personal work. Yeah, I'm doing a lot of, of personal works. I do at least six, seven personal works per year. It, oh, it means like it's, it's one personal work for each two months, you know. Um, it's development. This, it's so important. It's your own development as an yeah, artist. Man, I, I, I'm not saying like the people need, uh, don't, you know, oh, stop going out with your friends. No, it's not that. It's uh, you don't need to go like uh, for in your night. Stop, stop sleeping because of doing personal works or freelance stuff like that. I'm not saying that. I'm saying like you need to spend time practicing your skills. You know, we need you need to find one hour. Like you go to the gym. You know, you go to the gym. You go to let's say you do karate. You do. You, I like to play tennis. You know, some. Uh, sometimes I go to the, the court alone with my robot. I just stay there for one hour, hitting some balls, you know, practicing. And then if I want to be better in 2D, I need to practice more stuff. I need to do. And actually, when you do personal work, you can challenge yourself for for stuff that you are not being challenging in your actual work, in your actual job, you know. Oh, I've been a long time. I'm not practicing uh, the brush. You can go there and practice some rocks modeling although i don't want i i want to learn how to do rocks procedurally like Ali did for this nuremberg numerar and numenor shot so uh go there and start practicing you know i'll be showing something in my instagram uh, how i did this rock actually um i'm planning that and then like yeah man spend one hour at least per per day you know uh with your your skills that's that's of course that's it. of course i'm gonna go for a more direct question here i have a yep. question from andrea amentrano i hope that's mm -hmm. your name i'm sorry andrea andrea is asking the course can the course be followed even if you've never used clarice i guess yes i guess no yes for sure because there is one point you know i knew clarice i know actually clarice is not that uh very popular from the people out the companies, you know, when they get in the company, they get surprised. Oh my God, what's this software? I never heard it before, you know. And then they might have get stuck in their job, in you know, in, in their career. So what I planned was the beginning of the Clarice steps in the course. I start um, from creating the template, template, and then creating automatically assigned materials using shading layers. I, I created like a just a, you know that a pedestal like um, for uh, with the um, oh my god the crumb ball and the color shaker you know that stuff that really simple geometry we start creating our our template using that geometry applying shading automatically where it's crumb where where it's plastic where is the the color box you know color shaker so everything is applied automatically by creating the template. It's like one hour of hour or so that the people you understand how they can build their template. I will give the template for free, but I really advise the people uh, taking and in, in, in build at least two or three times. If they do this two or three times, they will be able to create any kind of environment. And that's the way the company uses it to work. You know, you have, you know, in Nuke, you, you press the button, the um, there is in a pipeline there is a button in any company that you create the the template for start the something and in clarice is the same in another software is the same you know 
um, and this, this is um, I'm trying to do, you know, it's preparing the people, preparing the artists to use in Clarice in a professional way and achieve something good, you know, that they can show later. Yeah, they we answer the question again directly. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> for everyone, it's possible using Clarice. Yeah, so, uh, okay, so let's see here. So more questions. There are so many questions. Just like going through them and see which ones would be would be the best ones for right now. Um, okay, so the Scar, Scar Jar Show, I guess that's his name, I don't know. The Scar Jar Show asks, is there any kind of bridge between Clarice and Nuke, just like Katana has a Nuke bridge? Is there anything like that? I mean, this bridge, I didn't know this bridge, like they said, like it's still... Yeah, and Katana for Nuke, but I guess, I guess it doesn't, I, I can, I, it's a bit of a trick question because I wanted yeah. to kind of like start talking about it. Like, I feel like a lot of people, a lot of people in the industry are always waiting for these bridges between softwares, but you don't really need a bridge between Clarice and Nuke. The only thing you're going to do is yeah. from Clarice, you're going to be, and correct me if I'm wrong, but... You're gonna be bringing in all the AUVs and the renders, and then of course you're gonna bring in the camera, and yeah. then inside of Nuke you're gonna rebuild that shader in the AUVs, and then you're gonna have the camera to help you with the matte painting. So, to be honest, a bridge is not really necessary, you know. To be honest, yeah, no. yeah, no. In this case, I guess no, because like Nuke is a composition software. You can have your render from Maya, from 3ds Max, Blender, for any any other software, for, yeah, you know, or even from Houdini, for example. In our case, from Clarice, and then uh, you can do it. Yeah, of course. Uh, in the companies, usually they have a pipeline that 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 have this kind of thing. You know. Yeah, exactly. You, They've you, built it in in top, of course. Exactly. You you assign it to the shot. You assign it to the show, and then you press yeah. um, the to read, and then you are going to read uh, what you have rendered in that shot specifically. Yeah. That's so, actually a good yeah. segue to the next question. So I have a question from Cleber Cotinho. Claire Coutinho is asking, how long did it took to render one frame of this environment you have on the course, or did good you question. use a render farm? Yeah, that's a good question. Uh, usually, to be honest, I used it to render in my machine. Okay, it took me actually three nights uh, to render in my machine. But I know that uh, some people might have not like a one time, you know, might have uh, time to to to. Uh, to render the, the the shot in their home, you know, uh, my shot took me around twenty minutes per frame. I guess it was with there is like um let me see, I guess it was forty billions of polygons also in that shot. It's very would be very heavy in any other softwares software. So it took me just twenty minutes. It's very very okay you know we industry we we do shot professional shots we took at least eight hours six hours in any shot that we do <laughs> <laughs> uh, when you were rendering the in the industry so um yeah it took me around 20 minutes or so but uh for the course for sake of the course uh the people that assigned to the course that you get uh points through uh, Fox Render Farm, that it's my partner on this project, that will help each student render their project. So they can animate it, those stuff, with at least uh, 108 frames, actually. They can have a count, you know, more or less. But if you have like eight, um, 108 frames and your frame is taking at least, let's say, 40 minutes, 30 minutes in your machine, um, that might be similar of mine. They can, uh, they might spend like a eight, eight hundred, um, sorry, eight, um, eight dollars in the farm, but they you get hundred points in the farm for free when they sign the course, and probably they you pay less than hundred for the course. I'm not yeah, sure yeah, yet yeah. the, the, the yeah. price, but probably it's gonna be like that. Yeah, and like, yeah, I mean, uh, I, I use the render farm at the, the final because uh, the Fox render farm gave me all the points that I needed to render this project, yeah, and then you give. And they you give you uh, the points enough, the enough points to do your render too. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, 
I, I guess, you know, we've been going already for two hours. I think we're going to wrap up. Wow. I, I'll leave it for one last question. We've been going for two hours and 10 minutes now, uh, Ali. So there's still a lot of questions. I do apologize that we didn't went through all the questions. I promise that Ali will be back on my stream. You'll be back on Hugo's desk and we will uh, follow up some more questions. But I, I guess I'll leave you with the last question, Ali, which I think mm -hmm. is really suitable because it's for a junior artist, you know. Uh, so I have a question here from Lee, and this will be the last question. Again, apologies if we can't do any more. So Lee is asking, what does one who is completely new to art world need to learn to be able to get here? I've just graduated from high school, and I'm not sure where to begin since there's so much online. So I guess Lee just, just graduated from high school, what advice would you give him to start if he wants to go into this path of visual effects in this industry? Just fresh, you know, I guess he's like 17 or 18 or something, you know? Yeah. Okay. Uh, if you don't have, if you don't have any knowledge about 3D software, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's going to be a bit more longer, your path. Okay. Um, but let's say you have uh, at least uh, some knowledge about ZBrush, some Maya or Blender or 3ds Max, something like this. It's okay. You have some knowledge about 3D already. You know, you 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 know the axes, <laughs> the 3D axes already. So it's it's cool. You can you are able to rotate your stuff in your screen. You you can see something there. I would advise you start creating small stuff. You know, dioramas. You know, let's say you see one nice picture on, uh, in like um, I don't know. There's some dioramas you can find in internet in YouTube. Actually, I love to watch that. I, I want to have a I want to have a garage actually at home to create <laughs> those kind of diorama. And then like uh, you can find a kind of diorama and uh, and check and do a, do a list, take notes. Okay, I have trees. Okay, what software I need to learn to create trees? And then you have to you are going to find a speed tree. It's a good software tree. Do this. If you don't want to learn uh, speed tree, it's okay, no problem. You you are, you don't have to learn speed tree in this case. You can find a um, a, a package of tree. You know, um, I have one actually. I have some in my in my story actually in, in, in my art station. It's especially it's especially for Clarice actually. And like um, you take the tree. Okay, I have let's say you have a bench in your stuff you, you have to scoop something in the brush you are going to do this small stuff and then you grab those kind of thing you know like you have the the light pole near of your bank it's kind of um it's small thing that you need to do it's just a small thing like you scatter some grasses you see if it's beautiful you know if you get a really nice result with this small thing do this a couple of times let's say five six times and then once you are good with this you can grow your projects. Okay, now you are spending, let's say, two weeks doing your personal projects, or one month. I don't, I don't mind the time. Though, okay, don't, don't care too much about this. Also, focus on the quality. This is important. And then, like, uh, and then you start increasing your uh, project, the size of your project. Start putting more and more detail as you go. Don't try. Don't try. Please, don't try to go crazy in your first project because you might get lost and you might get like sad you know the point of yourself because it's difficult it's not easy you need to press it small it's small it's small it's take small things and then you are gonna be good for sure cool man that's excellent I, I, advice I guess, that's really good advice no that's really good advice and i think i think also like lee i i would really focus your attention in just like trying to discover what kind of softwares are being the industry standard right now, and and then just try them out. Most of these softwares have either a free version, or an educational version, or a trial version. It is yeah. actually the learning, the the entry level is quite uh, small now these days. And not to mention, there's a free software. You know, you can start learning with Blender. You can start learning with Unreal. You can kind of like definitely go into mm -hmm. the free softwares first, and then get your footing into art creation. And then just start sharing your art with your friends on your social yeah. media, get some feedback, you know, 
and that's it. That's that's really it, you know. And you know, and, and always network, you know. You can always follow, go into LinkedIn, you know. You can always like um, follow well, Ali or follow me on LinkedIn and just uh, ask questions. That's yeah. how it works, you know. Networking is yeah, that way. Yeah, that's that, that's it, man. That, yeah. that that's the point, you know. Like the people can like book me and then like asking, and maybe I can. I will be probably uh, send an audio, probably because I hate <laughs> to start to stay like a uh, just writing. Um, but um, yeah, I guess, I guess, I guess that is it. Um, yeah, I guess that's it, Alia. We're gonna we're gonna wrap up. Um, and I I would love for you know. Thank you so much for joining today, Ali. It was great to have you on the show. It was great to have you on the channel here. I hope you return very soon. Uh, you know, uh, make sure you you post and let us know when the course is done. I'll make sure to promote it as much as I can from my side as well. And yeah, I would love for people to like uh, uh, congratulate Ali for his amazing work and and to thank him for his time. It was so good to have you here. And I know you you took uh, time of your busy schedule to do this shot and to go through your pipeline. Can't thank you enough for sharing all this stuff for free. You know, thank you so much. Um, oh man, I wish to I wish to have more time to to you know to share more you know and help more people like make the people understand oh. more about this. Uh, amazing field that is environment 3d environment and um thanks for having me thanks everyone for like to stay two hours and a half almost <laughs> with us. no man we still we still so, have almost we still have almost 200 people watching still 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 right now and yeah. you can see on the chat so many people thanking you already so many people and of uh, course keep in mind the chat that. the chat is like 20 seconds delayed so uh, you're just getting the thanks now but it was already 20 seconds later uh, already so but yeah thank you so much for your time and and i'm sure i'm gonna invite you again you'll be back I'm sure, uh, no. and and yeah, let's let's also thank all of the wonderful people from Brazil that were here because I saw so many people giving so much love to me and Ali. So muito obrigado to, to para toda a gente do Brasil. Muito obrigado por toda a gente ter visto o stream. <laughs> so okay, cool, Ali. So cool, so cool, man. I'll Thanks leave you to it. Me again, man. No problem. I'll let's all say goodbye to Ali and. Goodbye, man. I have a great time, and I'll see you all in the next stream. We'll be back next month, as you all know. Hugo's desk is always every month. I do a live stream, so in about a month from now, we'll be back with uh, I don't know what yet. We'll see. <laughs> it will be a surprise. So I uh, hope you guys enjoy that, and uh, I'll see you all later. Awesome. See you, bro. <laughs> Bye.